Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the stream. I uh, truly appreciate y'all guys being here uh, for this early stream. And, uh, you know, we're going to get going here in just a second. Uh, I want to say uh, thank you to, I see Arkansas uh, in there, Joni Friels, Big Chap, Yarn Prepper, Smiling Wolf, McBean, Ethel, Gen G, uh, Rich. Uh, who else do we have in here? Harvey Black, Cherokee. I'm scrolling really quick. If I miss anybody, I do apologize. Big Chap, Sharon. And Monoco 64. I think I got every John H. Daily Prepper, Celtic Prepper, Kate Bremer, Curious Lass, and all you folks. All right. So without further ado, let me please bring up my guest. Uh, good afternoon, Bjorn. <laughs> How are we doing this fine afternoon? I'm I'm okay. Thank you. I can't complain. I mean, it's uh we're in we're here in Florida, the weather is pretty decent. It's, uh, you know, been floating around the 70s and 80s and a, a lot of rain, uh, which, which is good for the garden. So, yeah, that's that's good. <clears throat> okay. So anyways, uh, some folks may I'm, I'm assuming most people on the stream will probably know who you are, but I don't know if you want to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself and your channel. Well, yeah, I'm uh, I'm a novelist and uh, that's my profession. And uh, I have been writing novels for many many years and uh, they are published in uh, several countries not in english i'm sorry about that as per today but that will change hopefully sometime in the future uh, i'm also uh, on youtube uh, i have three channels uh, and um, yeah that that's about it i guess um, yeah, YouTube is is a hobby, you know. It's uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and um, yeah, I like I like the outdoors as well, <laughs> you know. You've been on YouTube for how long now, Bjorn? For six years. Six years, six okay. Years. Yeah. I say you've amassed a pretty good following. I, I think it a lot has to do uh, with uh, some of the things that you portray on your channel. You know, like the the bushcrafting and stuff that you do out in the woods, the scenery. Uh, I thought it was great when you hit your uh, half a million and you had jumped in the ice cold water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I said I would do that, but I didn't think, well, you know, the timing was not so good. Well, I was very happy about reaching that number sooner than I expected, but uh, it would have been more pleasant if it happened during the summer. But uh, then again, it didn't. So that was a cold, <laughs> very quick swim in the sea yeah at yeah. least you you lived up to your promise that's all that matters right oh well, yeah you have to obviously yeah mm. and also i uh, want to personally thank you uh, i know back uh, about a, what, about a few months back you you made a comment on your channel and you said hey we need to get graded ten thousand subs so i truly appreciate that as well i don't know if i ever thank you personally i know i might have said it in the comments and whatnot but i wanted to thank you uh for that shout out well, you, you put some great content out there, so that's the least I could do, you know. So congratulations, by the way. Thank you. I truly appreciate that. Uh, yeah, it's it's like a, a rung every time you get to another level and, uh, you know, trying to get those messages out there about preparedness. Um, and, yeah. speaking, and speaking about preparedness, it made me think of the video that you just did. Um, I did one a while back very similar uh, in regards to something that preppers may not do uh, is, like you said, walking. I thought that was a very intriguing video that you did. Uh, just as recently yeah well thank you um you know we can all get lazy and uh, uh i i did that video because i was annoyed to be honest with you because mm -hmm. i see a lot of tough guys oh there are so many tough guys and and <laughs> they're all about oh my bug out bag is uh 100 pounds and i have all these guns and i will be uh, I won't move anywhere. You have that as well. I will, I will be in my homestead and I will defend myself against the U.S. Army or whatever it is, and <laughs> and, and all of that, you know. So now that's a, uh, <laughs> it's not quite quite that bad, I know, but it's just me being trying to be funny here. But uh, yeah, <laughs> being able to be mobile is uh, is underestimated to say the least. I agree. Uh, a lot of folks, it's it's something that we we have to kind of let folks know just because we're behind the camera sometimes. And let's say like I'm in this office here, this kind of studio setup that I have here. Um, 
but sometimes I'll do the videos where I'm out, you know, wearing my pack and I'm doing hiking through the woods and, you know, kind of searching for water and looking uh, for edible medicinal plants and stuff like that. And uh, I tell folks that's the key is to anytime you have, you can have bug out bags, you can have, you know, an arsenal, uh, but you need to train with the equipment. You need to get out uh, and do the things as they like to call it. And uh, because your body will not be used to it. If anything ever happens uh, in life, you know, let's say, you know, an actual collapse of society in the way, uh, way things are looking in this world today um, to it's like you said, I always use this for an example is if you were in your home or your homestead, right? And the folks from the city are pushing out from the cities into the rural areas. Uh, they're like, I call them the proverbial zombie, the zombie hordes. Uh, <laughs> and to <laughs> and to uh, to try to protect yourself because it's all about numbers. Even in, even in the U.S. military has been put in certain situations where they are in a small, you know, uh, thing. Thank you, Odessa. I truly appreciate that. Um, in a small, were they getting overwhelmed by numbers? You know, let's say in Afghanistan and whatnot, certain things have happened in our history in the U.S. Army. So just to say that we as an individual or a small family can, you know, keep these folks away uh, with what we have in our home can be up to, uh, like I said, opinion. But I don't think, I think the best route would be is to, you would have to leave your homestead, which would really be hurtful for most folks because they have so much stuff in their, excuse me, in their home. Uh, but you're absolutely right. I'm sorry to drag that on. I was just uh... no, no. You're absolutely right, and and it needs to be. We need to talk more about that because, uh, well, we can do it now, or 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 in. I was thinking about more in general. It's something that in the prepping community we need to talk more about that and do it more as well. Um, not just talking, but doing as well. Uh, you know, because I've seen a trend during the last maybe couple of years. It this is just me. Uh, telling you that I, I have a feeling that the the idea of bugging out is being looked down upon now. And it maybe comes from people having an unrealistic uh, view of what that would mean. I, because, you know, obviously it would be painful and dangerous for even the most prepared and trained individuals. But what I'm trying to get across here, my message, if you will, and, and I'm by no means very experienced. I've never been in a situation like that. But what I'm trying to say is that you maybe you won't have a choice. You know, so, so maybe you will have to do that. And if we look around now today, people are becoming refugees. And I'm sure that the people in the Ukraine they never thought that they would become refugees. And we have them arriving here not far from my house. Uh, there's a wow. uh, refugee reception center. It's now filled up with women and children, and they look just like us. Like they have a, a handbag and, and a suitcase and, and their kids. And you can tell that they, they just had to leave all of a sudden. And and it's like looking at it could be in my neighbor, you know. So uh, and I don't know. And probably they they were not preppers, so you know. <laughs> uh, but even if they were, it wouldn't have mattered in that situation because the bombs were falling. Right. So um, that might not be very realistic a realistic scenario in in the in North America. But in Europe, we live much closer to what has become a very obvious threat. Mm -hmm. um, so just saying that, um, yeah, and I, I remember the Cold War and um, I remember Chernobyl and all that. So, yeah, you might not have a choice, you know. <laughs> Especially, I mean, in, in your area. Norway, Sweden, Poland, uh, all those areas are so close uh, to that situation. And uh, I remember when I was watching first the first videos coming out of there, I saw a few things like people in lines for food, people in lines at the bank. Uh, you know, it was just it was pretty horrific in nature and seeing what was transpiring when uh, war uh, comes to your doorstep. And a lot of folks in the back of their head think, 
you know, and even in America, they feel that it'll never happen here. Um, and uh, I think that's a false sense of security that folks may have. Um, yeah. Because if you look at America's history, you know, we had Pearl Harbor, uh, I think, which is the closest to having boots on the ground here in the United States, other than back in the inception of America when, you know, the British were here and whatnot. But a lot of things have changed uh, since then. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, you have the advantage of being pretty much half a continent. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Um, so that it, it is different, of course, but um, um, over here it's we we share a border with Russia. Uh, so there is that, and there is also if we look back at the Second World War, um, people not many people know that there was also a threat um, because of the Allied forces restricting or wanting to restrict access to Norwegian ports, right? Mm -hmm. I won't get into details there, but I'm, I'm trying to say that in a general sense, your allies, your allies, is that the word? Yeah, allies like NATO and whatnot. <laughs> yeah, could make life difficult as well. So it's... Um, it's not black and white. It's not. Uh, it's not so simple. These these things are are complex. You know. Agreed. Um, there's, there's something I was thinking of when you were saying that, uh, because I, I've been looking at the uh, you know our current administration and what what's coming out of the White House and whatnot, and uh, I I feel like a lot of people uh, overseas feel that the administration that we have currently here is 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 a uh, weak it's not about the american people just like when i talk about when i whenever i mention other countries i always say it's not i'm not talking about the people i'm talking about the political powers that uh you know have this iron fist over a lot of us uh like we've seen uh previously with the health crisis and whatnot over the last two years um and uh i feel people are losing faith uh in our government uh and also into some parts of nato and whatnot uh, because of some of the atrocities that they let happen across the world. Uh, you know, for instance, what happened in Afghanistan and what's going on currently in the Ukraine. Hmm. Well, your administration is... Um, I'll try to be careful. <laughs> I, I don't like... I don't like your old man now. I don't... The, the, the former old man was better because he was much funnier. Mm -hmm. um, this one is, yeah, I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I'm not a big fan. Um, no, I'm not. But um, what can I say? There's a, and you're not alone, Bjorn. It's uh, there's a lot of folks here uh, on the channel uh, and across uh, our nation that are not happy. I mean, uh, with our economy, uh, with the way things are going, and the threat of. Uh, the, the idle threats that our government puts out to countries uh, out, uh, and let's say specifically China, and a lot of folks say, you know, well, you know, we have one of the most strongest militaries. And I'm like, yes, I understand that. I said, but China is one of the most largest exporters in the globe of a lot of different uh, items that we depend on here in the U.S. They wouldn't really have to fire around. They would just have to turn that knob and, and cut the U.S. off uh, in uh, certain aspects. You know what I mean? I yeah. agree, Blue Queen. <laughs> um, so I think that in itself could put us in a situation of of, of a SHTF or a chaotic situation. Uh, people that won't be have access to medications that come out of China and places uh, of a sort. Uh, I try to I try to show statistics on things. Like I did a video not too long on statistics on what Russia, Ukraine, China, and other countries uh, import to this country and where they sit at, you know, when it comes to wheat and corn, oil, gas, and all that stuff like that, and how dependent uh, many countries are. Um, I wish they thought like us, uh, funny enough, I, you know, I wish they were, most countries would think as in a prepper mindset of being self-sufficient. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, I actually, just a couple of hours ago, I read the news. That was the mainstream news here, uh, but this one I trust. Um, it was actually um, 
one of the ministers, what's her name now? Uh, Whitfeldt. Uh, I can't remember what what she. Yeah, she was. She's in the government, right? And she said, actually, publicly now that we might face food shortage. Wow. She said that. Uh, and and let me just say also that she said that that was the situation for Europe as a whole. Norway could also face these problems, but she said that Norway is better prepared than some than other countries. That one, I I would disagree when it comes to certain things like wheat and um, uh, yeah some other um, items as well. But um, that's what she said today. Wow. Hmm. You know, it's what I've noticed is being kicked around a lot uh, with world leaders. Uh, a lot of them, you know, and I, you know, at this point, it doesn't matter if I get hit by uh, the platform or not. Um, but because they speak about it freely, so I feel like I can speak about it freely. Um, but even just uh, our administration or the the old man, as we let, we'll call him here in this in the stream, uh, literally spoke and said, uh, you know, we're seeing a new world order, uh, and they've been throwing this world. Uh, so much around that it, it's coming to fruition. You know, a lot of people can consider it conspiratorial, um, but it's quite scary when you hear world leaders just throw that word around or that phrase uh, freely. Yeah, it, it is scary. It is scary. But but here's my take on this. Well, th this is sort of a joke, but but just follow my train of thought here. Uh, okay, let's let them just increase the taxes and let them as these IAI or some, some some organization proposed that you won't be allowed to drive your car on Sundays and uh, mm -hmm. and let's and and let, let let them just impose all those things and, and I will say yeah great do that <laughs> but listen that will make things difficult for most people like uh, earning money having a job um and living like the way we used to but okay i will not be part of this society anymore i will grow my, my own food i will work with other people uh to sustain myself my family um and it was so that's the consequence right so if if it's if you want the new world order okay we can have that but it won't be what you are imagining it will be like it will just be us doing our thing over here and you can have your little world or order <laughs> over there okay <laughs> because i would love to live like you know like that you know with no stress and and uh, just sitting in the shadow under a tree and eating apples and <laughs> but i know it's 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 naive of course but it's a bit of a joke but um what i'm trying to say is that at this can only go to a certain point, and I feel that we are very close to that point where we can't do this anymore. It it's not decent. We won't have a decent life if they keep taking more and more away of our freedom, our income, our liberty, and and we have to say stop because it's and it's going to cost more as well we have to pay more and we get less back okay big big rant there but uh yeah <laughs> understandable it's uh it's uh i call it the disconnect um a lot of people want to disconnect from say society because of where it's going uh and i agree sometimes i feel the same way that you do it's like in my head i wish like you know, I tell my wife all the time, I said, if it's just going to happen, I just wish it would finally, you know, get to the point and culminate to what it's going to be so that we can just go yeah, back yeah. to the old ways, you know, and just live our lives, not having to go to this nine to five and do all this stuff like that. And just grow our food, spend time with our family, break bread with friends uh, and, and people like, like minded folks, you know. Hmm. Yeah. But of course, that's not what they have in mind, these people. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately, they need the the taxes. They need our labor uh, to function, and uh, they won't let us disconnect uh, per se. No, yeah, no. we can only wish it was that easy. Yeah, it can be done to a certain extent, um, but um, as soon as you make money, 
um, they want that money. That's my that's that's why I, I have this very unpopular. At least in Norway, it's Norway. It is unpopular when I say, "Listen, I'm I'm paying so much in taxes. It's it's just ridiculous. It's not even funny anymore." And it means that I will do whatever I can to avoid that, as long as it's legal, of course. But but I get no sympathy because then people will say, well, you make a lot of money. Well, yeah, I practically have two jobs and I work long hours. But um, yeah, no, it's it's not a popular opinion to have here, at least in, in Norway, uh, to say that, hmm. well, I pay too much in taxes. I do. I pay half of what I earn in taxes. Um, it makes me... I, I'm not motivated to make more money. <laughs> Why would I be? I, yeah. Yeah, the larger that you draw, the more money that you bring in, and and I'm I'm I don't mean rich people. I mean middle class here in the United States. You know, which is like under, I think they call it under four hundred thousand dollars a year, um, and uh, which to me is a lot of money, uh, personally. Uh, maybe for others, not so much. Um, this is the first year in the, in the, in over 20 years that I actually had to pay out in taxes. I was shocked. Uh, and all because I started a YouTube channel, <laughs> ironically enough, that, that's, that pushed me over the edge and, uh, I was shocked. Um, luckily being who I am and being prepared, I had the additional finances to, to, to pay the government. So they would, so they wouldn't get involved in my life, uh, and some people say, no, you should fight. You should do this and stuff like that. But um, I've seen some people who've been audited by our government and the IRS and whatnot and lose their homes, lose their property, yeah. lose everything they have. Yeah. They have a, they're a lot stronger than people assume them to be, uh, which is an unfortunate thing because it should be, well, here in the United States, you know, we say we the people, uh, but they see it as we the government and uh, it shouldn't be that way. Um, I was going to ask you: Is uh, is fuel is the fuel and an economic impact affecting you guys as well as like in fuel and food and everything going up in uh, in Norway? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, someone in the chat um, might want to translate this to dollars per gallon. It's it goes up and down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Between 22 and 24, 25 kroner, N-O-K, per liter. It's a lot. It's a lot. So um, now we have, I have, uh, I mean, we are two people making money in this family, so we're okay. But at this point, we... People are just laughing here. Um, mm. Many people, like if you're a single parent, a single parent uh, household with only one in income, um, people are struggling. And also because we 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 have got, uh, they tripled, I think about tripled the price for uh, electricity to your house as well, just recently. Wow. So it's just, and these these things are things that people, they they have to have those things. They can't choose not to. Well, they can choose not to go anywhere with their car. <laughs> right. Not so fun when you have kids who want to go to um, friends and, and uh, sports and uh, activities, you know. And, and many people here live quite far away from, from school, so you have to drive your some people drive their kids to school and pick them up after you know and all that so yeah that's it's horrible <clears throat> are you guys seeing a uh, lack of like here I, you know I, i'm making assumptions to be honest with you uh because of course i've never been to norway uh actually i've uh haven't been to a lot of different places and i always wondered if like here i'm surrounded probably by six or seven major grocers you know large shopping chains and whatnot um and when I go to the store, I'm always analyzing the shelves and analyzing the food that they have presented. And uh, I've been seeing over the years, uh, in the last couple of years, even now, uh, the shortage. There, there's been less and less food. 
Uh, the cost, of course, is skyrocketing. I saw something that really blew me away the other day. I went to go get some uh, some things for my daughter, and I just happened to look over to the. Uh, they had isopure alcohol, seventy percent, and they had uh, what was the other one? Uh, uh, the one in the brown bottle. Uh, I know I don't know why my mind's. Anyways, focusing on the isopure alcohol, it was almost five dollars. I remember paying seventy nine cents to a dollar for a bottle of isopure alcohol. And that, that just shocked me. I know it's not food, but it just shocked me that it's it's gone up four and a half times what I used to pay for it. Yeah, well, food is is uh, has become an much more expensive, and they they are saying that it's going to be more expensive in the near future, especially meat. Um, now, because you shouldn't eat meat. No, that's naughty, naughty. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So food in general has become more expensive as well. Again, it's something that you actually you need food. You know, most people they actually need to eat. So, uh, I I don't like this because it's very unfair. Uh, it's uh, it's harming people that don't have a lot of money. You know, they they are the first. They, they are the people who suffer the most because of this, obviously. Um, and I think it's it's terrible. They could take away the taxes on food, gas, and electricity, and life would be much easier for those people now. They could do that tomorrow. They could do that tomorrow, the politicians, but they won't, of course. I agree 100%. Here in the United States, we pay most people pay a double tax on gasoline. Uh, here, they uh, the federal tax on gas is 18 cents, and I think each state differs uh, as well. Now, I've heard some states. Uh, I don't know if you know. You always hear uh, in the in the U.S. There's blue states and red states, uh, depending on the political parties and the political political affiliation and whatnot. So I'm in Florida, and I'm ran by a Republican governor. Uh, I know he had said something to the extent of removing the state tax off gas, which is a little bit of alleviation, but it's not a solve all ends all kind of situation because the federal tax is a lot higher at 18 cents. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's like you said, but they just won't do it because they don't want to lose that revenue. That's all they care about is that money and that power. Uh, truly a shame. And, and you're right. It's the, some of the people there, they, they would love to get rid of the middle class, which I don't know why, because we're the ones that provide most of the tax dollars and most of the, the labor and whatnot. Uh, but the, the poor are, are extremely suffering in our country. I mean, who would think land of the free America that we would have homelessness, uh, people starving and whatnot, because the poor, the, the inflation is hitting them hardest uh, in this country. And, uh, you know, someone uh, made a comment to me, and I don't know if they have something like this in, in Norway. Uh, we have a program that helps people get food, which they call it EBT or SNAP uh, or food stamps. And uh, this lady says, well, I'm, I'm fine. I, I still have my food stamps. And I said, ma'am, I said, but yes, those food stamps, if you have $300 in food stamps and you go to the store, you used to be able to buy this much. Now you're going to be able to buy you know, 30% less. So that's still less than you. They're not giving you an increase. You're still losing the amount of food that you can provide for your family. Yeah, well, um, I, I I can only say that I think it's wrong that when times get hard, difficult, that poor people should suffer. I don't, and I <laughs> I'm not. I, I'm far from uh, what you would call a leftist, but I just think that that's unfair. Now we can in this in in this household we can pay a little bit extra. We we are okay. We. We can do that. We don't like to do that, but we can. <laughs> we, it's not like we're starving. But some people are now. Maybe they don't have. Maybe they they skip dinner a couple of day, days a week, you know, to save money. Maybe they turn off the heating in their house and put on a jacket inside instead, you know. People shouldn't have to live like that. Norway, it's one of the richest countries in the world. It's just wrong, you know. And do you feel uh, the? Do you talk about preparedness uh, to let's say 
you know, folks outside of YouTube and do you ever get that pushback? Like, uh, you're just, you're just crazy kind of, uh, you know, thing that like people like to tell us here sometimes like, Oh, you're just, you're, you're overthinking it. That's what I get a lot. You're overthinking it. We're good. Uh, and I tell them that. Hmm. Um, no, I, people tend to know about this before I, get into that topic or we don't because of my youtube videos or they or we don't talk about it it's <laughs> like i don't i was on uh, i there was people here from one of the tv uh, networks doing an interview but that was about preppers in norway hmm. i believe and so they did a segment to that that tv show uh apart from that i'm not really talking about this to people i don't really talk to people much <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't really i'm not sociable um and because of the you know the last two years we we haven't been out in a restaurant or anything like that uh i'm okay with that it's uh so it's not really I'm, i don't go around talking with talking to people and at least and and i not about this um i did say to my parents i called them up and i said please buy some large uh plastic cans and fill them up with water so that if we get a, a toxic cloud from uh from the ukraine because they blow up a, a reactor there or something like that and at least you have water for a few days um apart from that no i don't talk about it much in uh in norway here in the u.s uh our media it's 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 almost political in a sense you know depending if you watch let's say here we have fox news or cnn cnn's your your far left and you have Fox, which is more right. Uh, and then that depends on the, and what you consume in the news. And, uh, I, I always wondered, do other countries have that same political division in the media? Uh, and do they promote a lot of different types of propaganda to the people to say, you know, let's say during the health crisis. Uh, and I, I mean, I knew you were very avid, uh, in some of the content that you produce for that, you know, when it comes to, you know, this thing and, you know, this thing and all that stuff like that, uh, were they, where the media like promoting it like they did here like i mean they made music videos here and commercials and that's all you would see on a continuous basis well um that thing was not as bad in norway mm -hmm. as in other countries we did not have the same we di didn't have the mandates and and things those things that mm -hmm. your old man uh, is such a fan of um <laughs> he's the worst president <laughs> I, I feel that too man i feel like uh, that's going to be history making yeah well uh but anyway um so we didn't really have uh those things but we did have the propaganda uh, and the propaganda was mostly done by uh, mainstream media and social media we don't have a large uh, conservative uh, or right-wing um, TV channel or news channel here. We do have some small news newspapers uh, that are, but they, they are mostly internet-based. So we don't really have that here, um, mm. which makes it's very difficult for people who just read the mainstream media or what's the mainstream media news channels and it, it's it makes it very difficult for them to know what's going on at all now i want to throw something in here that many people might not know um about russia is on social media now doing propaganda now i i won't get too much into that because it w awakens the haters but mm -hmm. i remember how that was like 
in the 70s and 80s. I'm seeing the same now. Of course, we didn't have social media then, but for instance, we had um, cheap uh, animated uh, series for children that uh, the state channel here bought for cheap in, in, uh, in those states, like um, the Soviet-dominated states, right? Mm -hmm. And that was basically, those were made under the supervision of Soviet communism, right? And it was a, it, a kind of propaganda. You had a guy who looked just like Lenin and he was helping all the kids. And I remember that very well. Uh, that was children's TV when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm seeing what I'm seeing. Well, it takes a bit of time for me to get to the point here. No, you're fine. What now, what I'm seeing now is that mainstream media is actually here in Norway doing a good job when it comes to the Ukraine crisis. Many people will disagree, but this is Norwegian mainstream media. And I think the reason they are doing that is that many of those journalists they are old enough to remember the soviet propaganda and that's in full swing <laughs> now um, um and that's what we're seeing in social media many people don't know that but uh, it's it's ex exactly the same they've probably been doing this for a long time for how long i don't know um uh, preparing this that that's what i suspect so in this case, mainstream media who were doing the propaganda, feeding the lies during the, the plague, as I like to call it, ironically. <laughs> <laughs> now, in Norway, they are doing a good job. They are critical even of the... of the... Uh, that guy, Zelensky. And mm -hmm. um, they are putting some attention to what's been going on in the in the Donetsk and Luhansk. So it's not all black and white. When it comes to the crimes that are being committed against uh, the the Ukrainians now, of course, that, that is very simple. And I think that's that's just obviously wrong. So but I, I'm just trying to say that Mainstream media isn't always telling a lie. It's not like some people are saying, well, I will not trust mainstream media. I will, well, you shouldn't trust them. You, uh, but people are <laughs> saying, I will, I will think that it's the opposite of what the mainstream media is saying. Well, that's stupid. You know, it can't be <laughs> like that that's equally stupid as believing in everything that comes out of mainstream media. So big um, rant there again, but um, yeah. Okay. You can... yeah, I, I don't know if you uh, know this or not, and maybe you do, cause you do, you're, you're pretty much plugged into a lot of different stuff. I did a video a while back and uh, this was, this was in the news. Of course, mainstream media didn't push it too hard here in the U S but about under six months ago, uh, we had an organization uh, here in the U.S. Uh, that was running through the streets, a large organization that kind of took hold after the whole George Floyd incident. Oh, um, yeah. yeah, and they were chanting, we want communism. We want communism now here in the United States. And I was shocked because I really don't think they grasp and understand what communism truly is. No, you can only look at what is happening under Putin now. That's communism. Communism has always been imperialistic, anti-liberal, anti-freedom, anti-individual rights. Um, what they are, maybe what they are thinking is that socialism is the same as communism. It's not. I'm not a big fan of socialism, but at least it's an idea that is more humane, even if it's naive in my 
opinion. I think it's just very naive, but it's if you're 15 years old and you're you're, you're saying to your parents, "I'm a socialist. I want uh, uh, justice for everyone." That that's you know you should, that's kind of you can kind of understand it because people go through these phases and so on. And it's it's a nice idea on paper, you know. But when people say that they want communism, well, you can have communism. It's very really easy. You can go to North North Korea, um, and uh, China. Well, China is communism 2.0, maybe. <laughs> uh, now you can go to uh, to Russia and. Uh, and uh, they can they can go out in the street in Russia and uh, streets there and uh, talk about the other stuff that they are talking about, you know, shouting about uh, uh, gay rights and so on. They can see how how the Soviets over there how they uh, like that. Maybe they will be surprised of the reaction they will get there. <laughs> now I'm. Yeah. I'm biased here because I grew up with the Soviet Union as my neighbor. Okay, so and that's not a joke. It, it's 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 not a joke, and it's no joke. It wasn't at all fun, you know. It was a threat to us. And we had submarines surfacing along the coast here. Wow. Right, Soviet submarines. Yeah. And uh, even uh, one of them got lost. <laughs> one of them got lost and surfaced in a in a Swedish fjord, and and uh, that was the that became a big joke or a big sketch. Actually, one of the funniest ever, uh, where this comedian, a Norwegian comedian, he is playing the part of the Russian captain, submarine captain, and he says that. Well, we're just a little bit confused. We can't see the border underwater, you know, and we're 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 out fishing. <laughs> it's a classic in Norwegian comedy. <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> that is pretty funny. I was thinking the other day. I don't know what your thoughts were on the um, Putin putting down uh, Russian ships down there by Japan and coming through the you know cruising through there, trying to show a force. It's like he's trying to show that he can be on two fronts, even though, you know, uh, a lot of people feel that the Russian military um, is, you know, from what our news media is, is, is very weak. Uh, but then I wonder when they make that statement that if, if the Russian military is truly weak, uh, why doesn't NATO and the U.S. get involved? And I know they fear the, the nuclear aspect of it, but I mm -hmm. think even lunatics or you know dictators like you know xi and uh kim jong-un and all those things under, have to understand that a nuclear option is world devastating i don't think in, not, not many people would survive or recover from that so i'm always wondering uh why let's say for instance if they feel that way why don't they just push in and help the ukrainian people uh forcefully well I think the, the answer is quite obvious, and it's because we fear that it will escalate uh, and become a nuclear war. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to, and and also I would throw in into this, throw in here, uh, whatever you say, um, that the speculation here is that is Putin um, weak. Now, will people close to Putin? make him disappear or put him somewhere else and will that happen that's what we are hoping uh, his appearance is not like it used to be a couple of years ago and so the theory that many many people are saying that we know that he was very scared of uh, contracting the the virus <laughs> mm -hmm. And he pretty much isolated himself for two years. Um, again, I, I can't know this for a fact, but this is theory, right? So the theory is that this has made him change and made him a bit paranoid, right? 
So a person like that with dictatorial power is very dangerous because he could actually do something insane like pushing that red button. I don't know, but <laughs> I am actually, I have to say that I'm glad that NATO has not gone in there and to protect the airspace over the Ukraine. And I hate hearing that. I When I hear those words, I know that people are dying. So it's, it's, it's horrible. But I fear that if they did, it would escalate. And it's such a cruel dilemma. Because me saying that is, you could say it's selfish because it's, I don't want to put myself and my, my family in danger. Obviously, I, I don't want that, but you know, and, and that, that's what I fear could happen. When it comes to Russian military showing their muscles, they've always done that, you know, and nothing new about that. Uh, they do it up by the, in the Biden Sea uh, quite often and we shrug our shoulders at that you know but we do it as well we do it as well um and when the russians do that in the news here <laughs> it's like oh, russian aggression oh uh, they are misbehaving <laughs> when we do it oh we are having a practice we are <laughs> responsible we <laughs> um they actually do have they have um uh, a military exercise up there but I, I was wrong i said in the live stream it was up in uh, the Biden sea uh, north of norway uh next to russia there uh but actually it's further south they are doing that uh so it's not right up there by the border and luckily uh there is uh collaboration well not collaboration but the, the norwegian military and the russian military have been in close communication uh, for many years. So it's not like they are enemies. And these people know, they know each other, you know, and they come visiting and witness Norwegian. They were invited actually to come and study and witness the NATO exercise. Uh, but the Russians uh, reclined the offer this year uh, for obvious mm. reasons. But they were invited actually, which I think was very sensible to do because we're telling them that we do not view you as our enemy we understand that if you're up here you're not the same people as the people who are bombing the civilians in in the ukraine so it's very important that we keep telling them that we do not want to have you as our enemy we want to remain friends uh, you know uh, and look, of course, there are lots of Russians living in Norway. Up in north, there are obviously people uh, intermarried with Russians on both mm -hmm. sides of the border, and so on and so on. So there, there isn't, uh, luckily, a big uh, divide between Norwegians and, and Russians. I'm sitting here like trying to catch chat as I'm sitting here as we're talking about is uh and folks i wanted to let you guys know uh like the conversation that we're having here today uh these are our observations these are our speculations and assumptions and stuff like that like me and bjorn we're not part of any elite group of anybody so we don't know 100 percent what's transpiring we can you know read uh material uh, our news and different ways of finding information uh so uh when i say certain things i know someone got mad at me because i called I stated that it was, I, I mentioned in, the, in I think the Sunday video that I did, I said conflict. I, I bounced between conflict and war and someone got upset that I didn't stay to the word war. Uh, they said it's not a conflict, it's a war. Um, and I, I think sometimes people will take that out of context. I don't know if you ever had that issue as well with your, your folks that come in there and get upset. People get upset no matter what I do. So, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, and uh, hey, Barbara. Uh, so I'd like to let know, it's just, we're just having a conversation, uh, you know, here, uh, and just kind of like discussing the situation and whatnot. 
Uh, I think it's, it's impossible to use the right words all of the time, every time you're on YouTube. Uh, it's just not humanly possible to do that. Agreed. Uh, I, I was thinking of something, and I can't remember what I, it was, you know, how you get these thoughts in your head while we're sitting here talking. <laughs> I'm trying to read what they were, what people oh. are saying. Um, in regards to, uh, you know, I was going to say, uh, where was it at? I was thinking about NATO and uh, some of the things that they're trying to push forward. And I was wondering your opinion on it because some people feel that it's being drawn out and they're slow, that people feel that our governments want a world conflict, even though they say that they don't. But by using the media and people, you know, getting upset uh, would slowly drag us into it because then the popular opinion would be, yes, uh, let's move in uh, into Ukraine and let's let's, you know, let's do this kind of situation. Uh, do you think that's something that uh, governments are doing or do you think it's just like that's the way we're perceiving it? No, um, I think that assuming that this war was started on purpose, well, well, yeah, it, it was, but not, yeah, but assuming <laughs> that this war was started on purpose by like people are saying the, the World Economic Forum or the, the people in the, in the West and, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but that's kind of naive to say that it's the world doesn't work that way. So people will get mad at me when I say that. But assuming that is it's it's stretching it. It's you're really stretching it. And then I'm sorry, but if you have the um, that information to be dead certain on that, well, you really should write the book, you know. Um, but here's what I think. I'm not, I don't know this. This is just me guessing. I can't know these things. I think that now that we have this war, lots of powerful people are thinking that, well, we could... Um, it's not all bad. We could... Um, this could be to our advantage, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and I'll, I'll, I'm being a little bit careful here because it's, I don't know how to say this, but there's a saying, uh, never let a good crisis go to waste. And I think that's what we're seeing now. And uh, people have these, pe these people, these kinds of people, you know, who I'm talking about, they've always um benefited from wars and of course they're doing that now as well and they're going to come out of this much richer and in a better position than before the war so as the war draws out and i think this might draw out sadly i hope i'm wrong they will get in a better and better position and they will What's that? They will become what we used to call after the Second World War, uh, war profiteers. Is that what you call it? Yeah, yeah. You could, yeah, you could use that term technically. Yeah, um, and that's not a good thing. You know? <laughs> I shouldn't have to say that, but it's not a good thing. It's uh, if you look at our history uh, and. Uh, Familiar, familiarize yourself with the Great Depression. What yeah. got us out of the Great Depression was World World War II. You know, because of the that that's to me when I look at that big picture, uh, that con that that situation is what drew America out of uh, out of the Great Depression. Yeah. Well, um, what got you into the depression? I think I know the answer. I, I saw that on TV. <laughs> was it the um, the, the dust, what dust bowl, the dust, uh, the agriculture failed, right? Correct. Yeah. It, it's uh, the agriculture, uh, of course, the inflated stock market, uh, the political, you know, beast that was running things at the time uh, were not letting people know what was going on. It, there was a lot, a little 
intricate parts and pieces. And here's the scary part of it is I look at our society now, uh, the way the economy is, uh, where it's headed. I look at the food crisis. I look at some of the uh, crops that we lost last year. Uh, Canada, even Canada, a lot of people on this continent itself, you know, Canada, America, South America, and all stuff like that. A lot of storms, uh, droughts, and things like that put a big hurt on the uh, agriculture industry here in the U.S. And uh, now with gas, fertilizer, and all the other components are going yep. to exacerbate that situation. And I think we're going moving forward to that. Hopefully Cherokee that answered a little bit your question is I do think uh we are headed for some sort of depression era like scenario. The first thing I thought when the thing in the Ukraine started happening was this. Okay, they want the grain. Ukraine is called the breadbasket of Europe. And I've been there and I've seen the fields, and it's like <laughs> vast fields. It's it's they have a lot of grain there, <laughs> um, and that made me think. You know, we do have uh, a sh whether no, it doesn't matter if you believe in you know man-made global warming or not. We have climate change, and that will affect the the. The amount of, of, of grain that we're able to produce. Uh, so, if you get a shortage of grain, obviously, human beings will do as they've always done. They will start killing each other uh, when they fight for the resources. You know. So, again, this is just me guessing. Um, could it be that uh, somewhere in Russia, some people with a lot of power, they said that, listen. We need more fields. And uh, what about Ukraine? You know, uh, if you look at China, they've been buying every ounce of grain that they could uh, get their hand, hands on mm -hmm. for a long time now. And that means something. That means something. They're, they're, they're not doing that just for fun. You know, I spoke to a, a lady. Uh, in my place of business, uh, she was adopted from Russia uh, before Russia stopped letting Americans adopt Russian children. And I asked her, I said, well, what, what was your life like there? And she's young. She's in like, uh, I think, 25, 26, you know, so she's relatively young. Uh, and uh, she said, well, most of the people, we don't really go to grocery stores because well, they didn't live in like Moscow. They lived in the outskirts. You know, the majority of, I'm assuming the majority of population lives in the rural areas. And she says, uh, we're more self-sufficient. We, we do farming, we grow our own food, you know, it's and stuff like that. And I thought to myself that here in the United States, it's so opposite. We are dependent. Uh, a lot of people are dependent on going to the grocery stores and dependent on this versus like, let's say some of the Russian people in other countries. Uh, because it's like you said, I don't really, you can't really blame the people of a country uh, it's the political figures or the war machines uh, that make a lot of these decisions, you know? Hmm. Well, uh, when I was in Russia, I I saw the, the little gardens, you know. Um, they It's quite common that they have a little cabin outside of the city. And in that, uh, in the garden there, they, they typically they will grow some vegetables and it was such a wonderful thing to see, um, and and it seemed like that was normal. And if you come to Norway, well, people do grow vegetables there, but it, but it it's more like very small scale, and you do it for fun. Um, but that was probably what I saw in those small gardens was they were producing quite a lot there, quite a lot of food. And the Russians are extremely re strong, resilient, and they've had to manage through communism. You know, so they they had to survive that and uh, through poverty, um, hard times. Before that, they were under the Tsar, you know, and uh, that was not so nice either. <laughs> 
Um, so the Russians are, it's, you know, I, I really liked Russian culture, <laughs> <laughs> obviously, um, because of the literature and the music, the art, uh, but also the, the Russian people, uh, there's something about them. And, um, and they are, it's such a tragedy that we've come in this, we have this situation now. And what I hope is that nobody will view Russian people as the enemy because they are not. And um, yeah. It, it makes me think uh, some of the things that have happened here in the U.S. Uh, during World War II, what we did to the Japanese folks and you know the internment camps that we had set up here uh, because we were in fear uh, that they were spies or whatnot. Uh, but what's leading me is to uh, we have a lot of, uh, as they call it, Asian hate crime here in the United States uh, because they feel that they're at fault for you know what what transpired in China uh, or what allegedly you know, happen in China, you know, oh, some people, oh my you know, God. Oh, so I didn't know that. yeah, it's, it's gotten bad. I've watched over the last year and a half, I've watched dozens and dozens and dozens of videos of people beating elderly women. Uh, I, it's, it's, I saw this guy, he's uh, an Asian man just walking down the street to go pick up the newspaper and someone stopped, stopped in a car and shot him to death. And he was a grandfather of several children. And this is happening here in the U S I, so, I I knew about uh, if I can be completely honest here. I what I heard, and maybe this is wrong, but I I heard that it was a thing with um, uh, uh, Af Afro Americans, some some Afro Americans, uh, blaming uh, Asians for whatever and and committing violence and so on t towards mm -hmm. them that that's what i heard about but i this what you're talking about now i didn't know about i and connected to the thing in china i, I didn't know that yeah that i because i've asked why you know I've, I've asked several several times why why is this a thing and that's what i keep on getting is because people feel that they were at fault and i'm like how do the people how are the people at fault in any situation? That's because well, as we're talking about the Russian people, how are the people at fault when it's really the governments? You know what I mean? Like I've noticed, like, let's say I've talked to a few people uh, and I've had brothers in arms. And sometimes we go to places, let's say uh, in the UK, even in the United Kingdom, they'll go there and there's a hatred uh, for Americans, believe it or not, even in the UK because of what, yeah, as because of what they assume America is. Uh, but they don't understand a lot of what they see as the political aspect of things. Well, you have come to Norway. You won't find that here. <laughs> really? That's awesome. That's great to hear. No, I, I know some Americans live here, and I. that would be... No. no. We're not that polarized here, you see. That but sounds we're, we're, very welcoming. Yeah, well, I maybe it, maybe it has happened, but I, I haven't heard about anything like that. Uh, no. And I agree, Mike. Uh, people will become more irrational as things get worse. Uh, it's uh, seeing what's been transpiring around here in the United States, uh, the crime wave um, that's been taking over the major cities. You know, everything has been going up and up and up and up. And then I feel that as the food uh, becomes more scarce, as the cost of goods become, you know, unobtainable for certain folks uh we're going to see more of that crime uh that's just unfortunately that's the way it rolls uh i just I, you know i just read an article before i start we started the stream because i get little pop-ups and uh it was heartbreaking to hear this lady in my county or where i live at uh, her and her two children were found dead in her vehicle uh because they were homeless uh and they didn't have access to food and and stuff like that and i was just like wow that's that's it's happening. You know what I mean? It's happening at my doorstep. That's horrible. And uh, and then you know, like I said, we look at America, like you know, the land of the free, home of the brave. This massive, you know, superpower. But things like this happen, and they're not really talked about a lot. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, so. well, I think our view of America or Americans here in Norway is it's it's very positive. You know, it's uh, we have this thing with oh, but some of them they just they they are they have their Bible in one hand and the gun in the other, and they're all crazy, crazy <laughs> people, and you have you have that that going on a little bit and some people are claiming it's like that and uh but m m that's i think it's it's a little bit it's it's said with a uh a, a like half joke you know mm -hmm. because our view of americans is is very positive and uh mine as well i mean uh I have a very positive view of, of you guys over there. <laughs> and you know why? You know why? Because I, I think, and this again, a theory of mine, um, so many Norwegians emigrated to North America. Really? Yes. Uh, there are more uh, Norwegian, uh, there are more ancestors of Norwegian uh, immigrants in North America than there are Norwegians in Norway. That's pretty interesting. This I, I never knew that. Uh, and that, that's what I really love about having conversation with folks that are from other countries. Uh, you know, like I said, I've had guests from South Africa, guests from Sweden, uh, Australia, Canada. It's, it's always cool to see uh, other perspectives, you know, because sometimes, you know, we're inundated with our own lives and our own country and what's going on. And we don't, Sometimes we don't see anything outside of that that bubble. One of my ancestors, well, his brother. Now I, I had two people who emigrated, and one was sent as a convict to Australia, <laughs> and the other one went to America. Um, he was very famous and rich. He was a composer and musician, and he was a little bit insane. Because it, not only did he emigrate, but he's, he, he wanted to establish his own country in America. <laughs> <laughs> and he oh, named country after himself. Um, it didn't go as planned, so he went back home to Norway. And, uh, but he, he did, he, he spent a lot of time and most of his money on that project, actually. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah yeah it's actually true um yeah see here i got uh maddie gee says uh that's me most of my family came over from the grimstad area oh. area merchant marines and small town historians tried to get citizenship but couldn't and thank you for the support maddie yeah grimstad is uh that's that's uh it's a very nice place very nice place especially during the summer by the, it's by the coast so yeah yeah i i when i watch your videos and i look at the where you're at it's just gorgeous compared i mean florida has its you know has some some beautiful things you know people love the beaches here and i'm assuming being who you are you probably love the ocean as well uh mm -hmm. you know and whatnot uh but i miss some of the northern regions of uh my country where i've lived at i've lived in michigan and several other places where the woods or the outdoors is a lot different uh than there but i've uh I've always looked at uh, even Scotland and Ireland and some of the just the rolling hills and stuff. It's just absolutely stunning and beautiful. Absolutely. But you have alligators, right? That we do. That we do. Uh, what's that like? Have you, have you, uh, have you had a close encounter with uh, an alligator on one of your hikes? Um, I have. Uh, matter of fact, I did a full video uh, with alligators specifically in the title uh, where because I know there's a spot that I can go to, uh, especially it's coming back up in April when we get when we get our last few cold snaps, uh, they'll be out sunning uh, and they're a little bit lethargic. So you got to you got to get there before they start spawning because they become aggressive. Uh, so I went and did a video uh, basically maybe six feet away from some of these gators that are about, you know, 10 to 12 feet long. Uh, people who saw that video were probably like, what is he doing? I mean, I had my sidearm and I had spotters and whatnot with me uh, as well as my wife. But uh, so I was safe, but I wanted to show people these things are heavily uh, infested in the Florida. I mean, you can find them in the canals and backyards and pools. 
Um, matter of fact, I've been pondering if I'm going to do a live stream this evening. I uh, usually I do one at 7 p.m. because uh, I had a horrible situation happen to me uh, yesterday, and uh, it was almost to the point. I don't know if you ever heard of a show called Naked and Afraid, but that's that's, that's almost the direction I went into just to kind of give people hints of. Oh. When I was trying to make it, I was trying to make a video, Bjorn, and it went really yeah, south. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's it's a bit funny and a bit sad, but uh, like I said, uh, okay. I may go live and then discuss that this evening. <laughs> I see. But uh, but yes, they're gators, snakes. Uh, you know, when I'm out in the woods, I try to be. I, I've I've been in Floridian most of my life. You know, the majority, let's say, ninety five percent of my life. Uh, so I've gotten very accustomed to being in the woods or, or around me. Uh, so I know what to look for, what to listen. But there's always an accident. That can't. Even my wife was upset with me yesterday. She said, you know, you could have died. And uh, I said, yeah, but I was doing it for a reason. <laughs> um, because I'm by myself with a camera, you know, out in the middle of the woods somewhere. Uh, and people are probably wondering what's going on. I'll, like I said, if, we'll see if I go live this afternoon or this evening. I will talk more about that. But, uh, but yeah, just some of the things out there. Uh, because where I was in the water, um, trying to retrieve something, uh, it's very marshy, dark, you can't see, and there's a lot of snakes and gators that kind of stand in the water. And, uh, I was using a stick to try to get to where I was getting to, but it got too deep. So I had to come back, but, but other than, okay. so that was like a little bit of a long explanation. <laughs> yeah. No, Mitten, I did not die. I'm here. This is not a, uh, apparition of gray. <laughs> But, uh, you know, I'm just in my, in my mind, I'm so used to being in nature that, uh, I don't second guess things. I just kind of go for it. You know, like you, you're, uh, I like when you're, you're sitting and you're having these discussions out there and I'm just, I'm listening to you, but I'm looking at the background and just kind of like observing, uh, the woods and stuff behind you. Hmm. Sadly, we don't have large predators anymore. Well, we have some, but like. It's just uh, the wolves, and uh, yeah, that's not a topic. Uh, and, and it's it's very sad because they are almost extinct now. Um, wow. Yeah, and the same with the bears and uh, wolverines, and it's um, uh, so people ask me sometimes, "Well, are you not afraid of the wild animals?" <laughs> There is one animal I'm afraid of. It's the tick. Mm. Because, as you know, you can get the, those diseases. So, and that tiny little insect, it, no, it's a spider spider thing, but um, not an insect, isn't that? Yeah, well, that, that's, that's a dangerous animal. <laughs> People don't think about it like that, but that's... Uh, that's a dangerous animal here. Uh, the wolves are not. <laughs> so uh, I've been several times out in uh, a woodland area where I know that there is a pack of wolves, uh, and I've been hoping to hear them. I haven't yet. So but one day, one day, I will. It's and it just made me think of something that kind of reverts back to what we were having the conversation earlier about bugging out, is uh, something like a tick, uh, and Lyme disease yeah. could take you out, could take you out if you're not prepared for something like that. Yeah. So again, it's something that people don't think about so much, and and in my my uh, area here or in Norway, uh, obviously the cold is your number one threat. Uh, and things like a uh, tick, and also since you would, if you're moving through the wilderness here, uh, it's uh, it's very much up and down and and uh, icy. You know, you could mm -hmm. trip, fall over, and break your leg. And um, and I I watched these hiking videos from uh, you know the Appalachian Trail and so on and. Maybe they're just filming the good parts, but it looks very flat compared to to this area. Um, maybe I'm wrong, but but it's uh, the the threats that people perceive to be threats are not, but the things you don't think about might be dangerous, right? So, like a tick, you know. 
Um, yeah, it's here in Florida, it's the absolute opposite. Uh, we get a lot of northerners that are moving to Florida because they want to get away from the cold. Uh, mm -hmm. And they underestimate the heat and the humidity oh, yeah. uh, tremendously. Uh, and it can hit you fast. You can get heat stroke very quick. Um, if you're fair skinned, the sunburn can blister you, uh, as well as dehydration. Some people just don't know the early signs of dehydration. Uh, and uh, if they're out there hiking alone, uh, just to explore things, uh, and they go too far, unfortunately, bad things can happen. I would have to get instruction, uh, <laughs> maybe take a hike, a few hikes with someone like you. If I was to go into the wilderness in, 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 in your area, because I wouldn't know what to do. And I guess that you would have to bring a lot more water than you'd have to bring here, right? So and I've had a heat stroke once, actually. Um, wow. Yeah, well, I was 14 years old. Uh, that was funny. Uh, not pleasant. I won't do that again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me see here. Folks, I, I just looked at the time, and uh, I just realized we we're actually over an hour. I didn't even realize it. I'm just conversating and I have to look in the corner and see that. Um, I think uh, I, I didn't see any questions pop up. In the meantime, I do apologize if I missed any questions. I was just kind of focused on our conversation and whatnot. Uh, like I said, I've been planning this with Bjorn for a while <laughs> to have him on the channel. Uh, anything that you want to wrap up with, Bjorn? Well, uh, first of all, if I didn't say so already, thanks for inviting me to your excellent channel to have this uh, conversation. Um, and also, what I would like to say is that because of, well, especially the, the war in, in the Ukraine, things are difficult for lots of people now. And uh, in my video descriptions, you will find links to some charities uh, animal charities uh, and uh, yeah i'm trying to help you know wherever i can we are seeing yes one more thing here we are actually seeing that those charities in other countries charities in other countries are having a difficult time now they already had a difficult time because of the the plague, as I like to call it. <laughs> and now we just moved straight to a war uh, with shortages, and the shortages are here. Uh, there might be a delay, you know, but they are here. And um, yeah, so what I'm trying to say is that if you can help some charity, uh, please do. Um, they are struggling now, most of them. So, yeah. <laughs> if you can, please do that. Yeah, that would be very kind of you. Uh, you said they're down in your video descriptions, correct? Uh, yeah, I have three charities or so four there uh, that I have on every uh, video description. Um, those are not uh, in that area. Those are in, uh, some of them are in Spain and Norway. Um, but but anyone can, can find uh, these charities on the internet, you know. Uh, I made, um, a, a, the, the money I made on, on that video on the Ukraine situation, or rather the Russia, Russia's threats towards Scandinavia, uh, I, the ad money went to an animal charity in the Ukraine, so it didn't feel right to make money on a tragedy like that. So, so that that felt really good because I know they really need it, um, and I had the opportunity to to give that away. So, so I did, and um, yeah. But first and foremost, also I'm I, I have to say that. It, it's not selfish to, to, you know, to first care about yourself and your family. And we shouldn't become scared when we shouldn't become um, too obsessed with, with negativity. But uh, we might be facing some difficult years now, might be moving into uh, some difficult years.
<laughs> yeah. Agreed, my friend. Agreed. Uh, and I want to thank you as well for taking the time out of your busy schedule uh, to join me uh, here on the channel. And uh, like I said, I just appreciate what you do, uh, your content, man. Uh, you know, it's uh, and I, I can't, you know, I'm really looking forward to uh, you. Got to let me know in, on a Skype or an email or something like that when they convert some of your novels into English. Uh, I'd definitely like to read one. I'm a, definitely an avid reader of stuff. So, yeah, I, I will, uh, I will do that. Uh, I will absolutely do that. And there, I don't know if people can see what I see here, but if they do, it's my website address on the photo there. That's uh, b u l l hyphen h a n s e n dot com. That's where I I have a list there uh, of uh, with links to my novels in the different languages, and I'll be will be updating that. They were supposed to be coming out in Russian actually in about now, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, sadly that had to be postponed. Not not cancelled but uh, delayed and uh, i think actually that's silly because again it's not the russian people they are not to blame her thank you jen uh and thank you mods for putting those links for bjorn's channel uh his uh charities and everything else like that i saw that pop up as well so thank you guys so much and pony girl says thank you bjorn for uh for that comment I needed that comforting encouragement. So, well, thank so, you. thank you. And, I, and like I said, I always like to say thank you, the viewers out there, because uh, without you guys, I wouldn't even have a channel. Uh, so, I want to thank you guys. Truly appreciate you guys being here, uh, even on this midday live stream. It's something I normally don't do, uh, and you guys were still here to, to support the channel. Uh, so, I truly appreciate that. And anybody that's Came over from Bjorn's, uh, Bjorn's channel. I appreciate you guys being here as well. Uh, take the time to look around and see if there's something that you might like. Uh, you yeah, never know. Uh, consider sub subscribing to Gray Man Prepping as well. That would uh, it, it helps a lot uh, when you're on YouTube. It, it really helps. So I recommend it. Highly recommend it. I appreciate that. And Mod, you guys did an awesome uh, job of keeping everything family friendly as best as we could. Uh, and thank you. Thank you guys for uh, joining us this uh, afternoon. Uh, and like I said, uh, I'll let you guys know. I'll probably go live this afternoon or this evening. Uh, I just maybe, maybe not a full hour, but we might just uh, just go over what happened and whatnot. Other than that, I want to say God bless to you folks out there. So uh, uh, <laughs> and take care. Okay, bye.